tonight. I just, I, I just want to minister a little bit at Acts chapter 2. I'll go to some different places here, uh, kind of something that I did last Tuesday night. And what I did last Tuesday night for prayer meeting is I just, rather than taking prayer requests and, and things like this I, I, and passing out the prayer needs on the paper, instead I just felt like we should just come up to the front and wait on God and not get in a hurry. So that's what I want to do tonight. So already I just want to tell you, I'm going to have a prayer meeting. I'm going to have an altar call. Now, nobody forces anybody, but I just want you to know that I think this is the answer for the church today. This is the answer. This, the, a lot of times the church has moved away from this. The church has moved away from the power of God. The church has moved away from the word of God. The church has moved away from altar calls. The church has moved away from, from, from the blood of Jesus Christ even and altar calls and the power of the Holy Ghost. It has moved away, but we've got to come back to it. And I believe this is the answer to all the problems in this life, all the problems in the world. This is the answer right here. Let me tell you something. I, I want to know something right now. Is anybody here born again today? tonight. Are you born again tonight? Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Let me say this. Regardless of what denomination you are from, doesn't matter. God crosses all denominational lines and God wants to baptize you with the gift and the promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not talking about just hype. I'm talking about power. I'm talking about unction. I'm talking about something that God gives us. God-given ability to fulfill God-given will and purpose. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do it in the flesh. That's why God gave us the Holy Ghost. That's why He gave us power from on high. We need a church. A world that's on fire, a world that's a mess, all the anger, all the hatred, all the murderous spirit out there today. This is the answer right here, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's easy to preach when, when the spirit is like this tonight. I tell you that. Anybody can preach like this, okay? So, so first of all, amen. That's a, Caden, amen. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> no, it's all right. Out of the mouth of babes. Let me tell you, it's okay. Out of the mouth of babes. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I, I just, I just want to do this tonight. I, I want to I title this. I want to title this. What did I title it, Brother John? I said, it doesn't matter, but it does. It doesn't matter, but it does. I want to title it that way. It doesn't matter what it does. Look at Acts chapter 2. Hey, man, and I tell you what, if you want to know more about the Holy Ghost, if you want to know more about what God has for you, you can read the book of Acts. Praise God. I just want to ask for a couple hands to on this. I just want you to jump up and, and like really fast. I want you to tell me real quick. Amen. If you're baptized on the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I want you to jump up real quick and tell us when and how you got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Anybody tonight? Anybody? Hallelujah. You want to tell me, Sister Laura Lee? Hallelujah. 1976, God baptized her in the Holy Ghost. Sister Jan. Yes. Yes. In the service. In the service. So b before altar call, just turn worship. God baptized the Holy Ghost. You mean nobody lay hands on you? You said nobody prayed for you. You just boom right there. God did that. Hallelujah. Wow. You have been seeking it. You were seeking God, seeking God. Didn't get it here. Didn't get it there. Didn't get over there. Didn't get it in. But then you're doing transparencies on a Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night. What was it? Sunday morning, doing transparencies. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God moves and baptizes her in the Holy Ghost. She's trying to flip those old transparencies, those plastic sheets with the words on them. Had the old screen up here. And God baptized the Holy Ghost. She began speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? So, so, so what I'm trying to say tonight is that it was different for them. Okay? Anybody get baptized in the Holy Ghost at the altar? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes.
go back again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so it's real. What we're trying to say is, real. I know theologians will say, well, it died out with the apostles. They're wrong. I know that people will say it died out because we got the whole Bible, the Old and the New Testament canonized, 66 books, but they're wrong. You see, they're wrong. Our experience that we have, and as few of you share tonight, line up with the Word of God. I was one of those too. I was born and raised in Catholicism. That's what I was. And then later at 14 years old, I started going to a Baptist church and I heard the gospel for the first time. And, but it, you know, I didn't give my life to the Lord for 13 years. I tried to live on my own, 27 years old. You know, God pulled the carpet up from underneath me and I realized I was lost. I make a long story short, I got saved. Hallelujah. And it wasn't long after I got saved that God began to deal with my heart and said, Mark, there's more. I said, how can there be more of this? He said, there's more. God began to reveal. I'm reading the Bible. God's opening up the passage in the scriptures about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I visited a few churches with a friend of mine that, uh, that, that were Pentecostal, you know. And then I met my wife and she's going to Jimmy Swaggart Ministries and she's Pentecostal. So I see God putting all this together. And I remember, amen, I said, God, I want this. And I begin to pray and I begin to seek and I would go to the altars and seek. I'd stay at friend's house all night long praying, seeking God, seeking God at lunchtime, at work, going to get my, uh, getting under a table in a cubicle where nobody was in there. And I would pray and I would seek God. But I didn't have the Holy Ghost yet, Oscar. But I wanted it, brother. I wanted it. I'm hungry. I desire God. And so what happened one Sunday morning, uh, amen, I went down to the octagon at Jimmy Swigert Ministries. It wasn't camp meeting. It was just a regular Sunday morning service. Uh, and they pray for the sick. Remember when they do that? And they'd lay hands on them or they'd anoint them with oil and pray for the sick. And I was asking God. I needed deliverance. I needed God to touch me in a certain situation. Uh, and I went down there and I lifted my hands. Uh, and I said, dear Dear Jesus, listen to this. Before anybody got to me, before anybody laid any hands on me, I heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind. God came, and I said, Dear Jesus, that's all the English there was. After that, I'm talking in other tongues. God baptized me in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you that God is almighty, and God has a promise for the church. God wants to empower the church. The devil wants to keep it from you. The world wants to draw it out of you. But I'm telling you, there is power from on high. There is a promise that comes from the Father, and it's for the church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm here tonight. Look in Acts chapter 2. I want to talk about how these folks were baptized the Holy Ghost, but it was different for all of them. It was different. Sometimes we put God in a box. Sometimes we say it has to be this way. Well, you've got to stand this way. Well, you've got to pray this way. Well, you've got to do it this way. I don't see that in the Bible. Amen. I want to talk about people in three different ways that got baptized in the Holy Ghost. It said in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost the cost had fully come glory to God 50 days after the crucifixion they were all with one accord in one place that is important that people have the unity and be in harmony when it comes to God when it comes to the things of God you know why because I tell you this there is power in harmony there is power in unity that's why the devil wants to divide the church that's why he tries to divide the body of Christ because he knows if we have harmony he knows if we're in one accord he knows if there is unity that there will be power that comes from on high. Amen, church. And so here they are. Now I want you to notice Jesus had told 500 to go and wait for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, for the promise of the Father on high. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. He says that, but only 120 obey the command of God. 120 that are hungry for God. Not everybody is hungry. They might be saved, but not everybody's hungry. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I mean, you might be alive. That doesn't mean you're hungry. Amen. You know, but some people are starving. Some people are starving. How you know you're hungry when you're up at the dinner table before mama says dinner's ready. Now you know you're hungry. But if mama has to ask more than one time, you know you're not as hungry. Amen. But I'm telling you, there's a lot, listen, there's a lot of things we're feeding off of that's trying to quench the appetite that we should have for God. But not everybody is hungry for God. Not everybody is fascinated with the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I talked about Jacob, that's still burning in my heart. He said, what is your name? He became fascinated with Christ. He wanted God. He wanted to know God. Who are you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to know you. Not everybody is hungry for God. Not everybody's fascinated for Christ. But these people here are hungry. I want you to know these 120 are hungry. How do I know? Because they prayed for 10 minutes. No. Come on now. Because they prayed for how long? They prayed for 10 days. They said, you know what? The lawn can wait. The trimming can wait. The dishes can wait. The laundry can wait. The groceries can wait. I'm going to take a 10-day vacation. I'm taking some time off of work. Why? Because I want what Jesus said that was for me. What was it? God, I don't know. He said there's a promise that the Father has, and I'm hungry for it, and I want it, and I'm going to wait until I get it. I'm going to seek God till it comes. Come on, say amen. Amen. I guarantee you that preacher wasn't saying it. Where are you? How come you didn't come back Sunday night? Where were you? Where were you at Sunday school? (laughs) That's right, sweetie. Hallelujah. Amen. They were hungry. They were hungry for God, not for games and gimmicks. They weren't trying to show off to anybody. Amen. They waited. They didn't know what was coming, but they waited. They waited. They wanted what God said. Jesus said there's a gift. Jesus said there's a promise. And so they waited and they prayed. Listen to this. Look at verse 2. And it said, And suddenly there came a sound of a, from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. I, wa- I wonder what that sounded like. I mean, really, what did that sound like? I've been in a tornado before. That's loud. A tornado hit our house. I was in it. My mom and I were in it. And that was loud. I mean, it was really, when they say it sounds like a locomotive, it really does. It was coming through and it was loud. And so it just, just, just pay attention for just a little bit here. I, I, I promise I'll try to be fast. But I don't guarantee it. Okay? There's no money back guarantee here. Okay? But I'm just saying, I wonder what that was. And I would have to think that it had to be something in the spiritual. It had to be something in the supernatural. We've heard wind. We get 80 mile an hour sheer winds here in Ohio in a thunderstorm in the summertime. And I've heard wind. I've been in a tornado and I know what that's like. But, but I've got a feeling that this had to be something different. Because it was of heaven. It was of God. It was supernatural. Not everybody can hear it. It's just interesting that the people that were out there, they thought they were drunk, you know, because they heard everybody speaking their own language and all that kind of thing. But it didn't say anything about them here in the wind. It just said they heard them talking and speaking in tongues. I just wonder, I just wonder if people that are in tune with God are the ones that hear something of God and the others don't. It's like you're sitting there in the pew and God is speaking the presence of God and there's a rushing mighty wind and you're going, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, I love you, Lord, this is so good. And the person sitting next to you going, what's up with you? They hear something and they don't. It all has to do with the condition of the heart. We Christians are weirdos. We see things people don't see. We hear things others don't hear. We know things others don't know. We perceive things others don't perceive. Because this is not of the world. This is of God. This is supernatural. This is of the Lord. And I want you to know something. I'm hearing things tonight. And I'm seeing things tonight. Hallelujah. From heaven, from God. God, listen, these people were waiting and they're tarrying on God. And suddenly there came, all of a sudden, after ten days, they didn't know when. They didn't know when. Five days, ten days, fifteen days, twenty days. I don't know. I'll wait until it comes. There it is. That's the kind of church we need today. That's the kind of Christians that are going to make a difference today. Wait until it comes. He says, and fill the whole house where they were sitting. Notice that. Notice that. I brought this up Tuesday night. They're sitting. And they're waiting on God. Now, I don't know what it's like 10 days, but I can imagine they're, they're praying. 
and they're worshiping and they're seeking God. But the Bible said where they were sitting, sitting, not laying down, not flat on their face, not on their back, not, not kneeling at the altar. No, that's okay to kneel to the altar. And it's okay to lie flat on your face. It's okay to lie on your back. It's okay to pace the floor and walk in prayer. That's okay. God is bigger than your position. God is not concerned about your physical con- position. He's concerned about your spiritual position. He's concerned about the position of your heart. It's good to see you, sister. Hallelujah. Picked a good night. <laughs> God, listen to this. We get all caught up. Got to stand. Got to sit. Got to kneel. Got to be on your face. Got to be on your back. Wait a minute. The Bible said they were sitting. She w- Jan was standing, flipping transparencies. And God baptized the Holy Ghost. Right there. Flipping transparencies. Years ago. Years ago. It doesn't matter your position. What matters is the position of your heart. In fact, this is the question. Are you hungry? <laughs> Oh, hey man, I'll be like, I'll be like going to McDonald's, right? You'll see me there a lot. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to watch the calories and things like this, you know. And so, you know, I say, well, give me a cheeseburger, no onions and a Diet Coke. That's, that's 300 calories. I already know the calorie count. My boys, I say, guys, want anything? Well, okay. Well, sure. You're, I said, it's on me, Michael. Give me two double McDoubles and uh, iced coffee. Matthew, same thing. These guys are hungry. And what they're telling me is they want more. They want more. And I'm just trying to say, church, I want more. I want more. Don't you? I want more. I'm not satisfied with just a cheeseburger. Amen. Give me a double and give me two doubles. Give me more of the spiritual food that comes from heaven. Give me more. Hallelujah. There are people, listen to me, they resist God. There is unbelief in their heart. There is pride in their heart. They, they, they resist God. I know that. But thank God for those that want more. Thank God for people like you that come back on Sunday night and you want more of God. You want more of His Spirit. You want more of His blessing. You want more of His presence. In fact, you want the Holy Ghost. Because you and I know it is the answer. And sometimes we can become passive or lackadaisical in these areas. But that's why we need to pray. We recognize and say, God, stir my heart once again. You know, in Luke chapter 24, when Jesus was talking to the men on road of Emmaus, the Bible said they, that Jesus indicated he would have gone further. They said, let's stop here. Let's stop here. Sorry, folks. It's all coming to me right now, okay? And... The Bible says that Jesus indicated that he would have gone further. And I think what's happening today, and myself included, as we get very comfortable and we say, let's stop here. This is as far as I want to go with God. This is as far as I want to go with the Spirit. This is as far as I want to go with this Word. This is as far as I want to go with commitment. And Jesus indicated, but come on, I'll take you further. I'll take you further. Come on, church, you hear me tonight? I'll take you further. Word of life, I'll take you further. Pastor Mark, I'll take you further. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll take you further if you're willing. Because God won't touch your will. He won't force you. He won't make you. But notice this. They're sitting. And then God came. All of a sudden. And there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And one sat upon each of them. What is that? That is the visible presence of God. The Lord showed up. The presence of God was there. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. And what? What is the initial physical evidence once filled with the Holy Ghost? And coordinated conjunction doesn't stop. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what? And so it's connecting. Being filled with the Holy Ghost is in connection. It's coordinating conjunction. It's connecting with this. And spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The initial evidence that you're baptized Holy Ghost is, being, is, 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 being, is speaking in other tongues. Because I want you to know... That if you're speaking other tongues, you know you got something. It's not made up. You don't teach somebody to do it. It's supernatural. It's of God. So I find that these people waited. They were hungry for the Lord. God poured out upon them. They heard a sound of a mighty rushing wind, something in the supernatural, something in the spirit. And God blessed them. And guess what? 3,000 souls got saved. Peter preached conviction, anointing, power, unction came with it. They had something they didn't have before. 
Now what? If Peter would have gone out there without the Holy Ghost, he wouldn't have had that kind of result. But because he had the Holy Ghost, guess what happened? 3,000 pricked to the heart. 3,000 heard the Word of God. 3,000 responded. 3,000 saved. 3,000 added to the church that day. Talk about church growth. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot. It says in there, Peter went to the bookstore and bought a book about how to, how to have church growth. It doesn't say that, does it? Come on, church, tell me how. It doesn't say that. You know what? I want to tell you the best church growth, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. The best church growth is to be filled with God and filled with the Holy Spirit. Now what happens? Look at chapter 2 and look at verse, uh, look at, oh, I don't know, uh, verse 40, 42. Uh, verse 41, then those who gladly received his word were what? Baptized. That's baptized by water. And 3,000 souls were added to them. Okay, that's the same day right after this Pentecost. Okay, now verse 42, and they continued to step past the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking the bread and prayer. So they stayed in the word. They stayed in fellowship. They stayed in church. They had church. They, they worshiped God. They stayed. They had, they had the Lord's Supper. They had the word of God. And then fear came upon all the souls and many wonders and signs were done to the apostles. Now verse 44, now all those who believed were together. There's the unity. There's the oneness. There's the sameness, if you will. And all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all anyone who had need. Let me tell you something. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you love God, you love the gospel, you know what's the answer? You want to tithe, you want to support it, you'll sacrifice, you'll do whatever it takes. The very fact that a person is not giving tells me they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. True story. You know what happens if you're filled with the Holy Ghost? You're just caught up with eternity. You're trusting God. You're trusting God. You're, I, listen, I should not have to ask for a dime. I should not have, a, I should not have to ask for a dime. They, they didn't. They didn't. They said, said, said they divided among them and had need. anybody had need. They took care of it. The church took care of each other. Because they were filled with God, filled with the Holy Ghost. And so, continuing daily with one accord, one accord, there it is, in the temple and breaking bread, house to house. They, 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 they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God. Here it is. Here's the nether. Praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. God was in it. They had the fire. They had the presence. They had the hunger. They had the desire. They had the Holy Ghost. There was a difference. And that's what the church needs today. We have, we have, we have, we have come back to where we have a man-made church, man-made efforts, man-driven, man-guided, man-led it. I want Holy Ghost-led, Holy Ghost-driven, Holy Ghost-guided church. That's what's needed in our lives. All right, so they were sitting. (sighs) Acts chapter 10. So this is different in Acts chapter 10 because Peter is preaching as a vision from God. Some guys from Cornelius' house come knocking on his door. Same time, Peter's having vision. Peter's waiting for lunch. And so while they're fixing some sandwiches, he has a vision. He spent a little time in prayer, spent time with the Lord. And so right, waiting on the Lord. And so he, he has prayer waiting for lunch. And he goes to the top of the roof and he's just praying. He didn't turn on football. I just, I'm just telling you, he didn't do it. He didn't turn on baseball. And... Uh, I just want to say something here today. I want to say something here today. I love our American flag. And I love what it represents. Okay? I'm not supporting anybody or anything that doesn't love our flag. Period. Okay? Amen. All right, so... And so Peter gets his vision. So, and so you know, Cornelius got some guys from Cornelius' house who want to come and preach the gospel. So he goes over to Cornelius' house. Cornelius, they're Gentiles. They're uncircumcised. They're not Jews. And the Jews had a hard time for this because they thought this, this gospel, this message, this salvation, this, the gifts of God, that God was only for them. And so they had a hard time saying, you mean this is for other people besides the Jews? And, and so, yeah, that's what God was trying to show him. Don't call, don't call you know, unclean what, what's clean, what God calls clean. And so, and so it says, so Peter says, okay, I'm getting a hold of this. I'm learning, Lord. I'm trying. So he's teachable. 
He's teachable. They say this is 10 years after Acts chapter 2. I don't, you know, about 10 years. And so Peter is teachable. He's still learning. He's still growing. God is still dealing with his heart. And so he goes, and it's in verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words. So he's preaching at Cornelius' house. People are hungry for the Lord. They want to know about the gospel. And said, while he's speaking, while he's preaching, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the words before altar call, right in the middle of the service. And it said, and those of the circumcision, that's the Jews, who believed were stopped. Astonished. They were amazed. They were like, whoa, what's going on here? Why were they astonished? It says, as who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Ghost had been poured out on the Gentiles also. How did they know? They saw something different. It said in verse 46, For they heard, come on church, help me out tonight. For they heard them speak with tongues. And what is, and there's a coordinated conjunction. So now they're baptized in the Holy Ghost right in the middle of the service before altar call. Amen. They believed and they, they accepted Christ right in the middle of all that. God saw their heart. And so the Bible said, And they heard them speak with tongues. Coordinating conjunction and magnified God. Hallelujah. They were in service. Well, Acts chapter 2, they were sitting. God doesn't care where you sit and stand and kneel. doesn't matter. Okay? And they received it. And then in verse 47, they were baptized in water. You mean, wait, wait, wait. This can mess up your theology. Hold it now. You mean, you mean they were speaking in their tongues before they got baptized in water? <laughs> Well, you can't do it like that. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> because notice here, Peter's just a willing vessel, and, and he just preaches the gospel. God takes care of the rest. You see that? God takes care of the rest. And so God sees their heart. God sees, hey, they believe they got saved, and nobody laid hands on them. And, and right there, before an altar call, before Peter asks, does anybody want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? He didn't say that. God came and poured out upon them. Isn't that cool? Look at Acts chapter 19. I got to hurry. I got I get caught up in this. I can, I can go all night like this, okay? Just hold on. Just look, at this. look at this. Acts chapter 19 and, then, and verse 1. And it happened while Apollos, that's Paul, was at Corinth, that, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Now, now he went to Ephesus, okay? The city of Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? When you believed? And so they said, well, uh, they looked at each other and they kind of, well, they scrubbed their heads and they said, well, uh, uh, we have not as so much as heard whether there's Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. And, and so, and he said to them, well, into what then were you baptized? And they said, well, in the John's, ba John's baptism. Well, that's John the Baptist. What kind of baptism? Was well, that was a baptism of repentance in the Jordan River. Remember that? So, so they said, we were baptized in John's baptism. That's a baptism of repentance. And so then Paul said, well, John indeed baptized with, with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him and whom, who would come after him, that is, on the Christ Jesus, or on Christ Jesus. So when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, that's water baptism. They go, oh, man, nobody told us. We didn't know that. Now, this is like 20 years after Pentecost, so I don't know where these guys were. But apparently their cell phones must have broken. The batteries went dead. Right? No email, no text, no Twitter, no, no Facebook, no Slapchat. I'm going to make one up. Slap, slap chat. That means when you say something silly, I'm going to slap you, right? <laughs> Won't that go good? I'll make millions. It's a new app. Slap chat. You like it? What do you think, Abby? It'll work? All right. And so they didn't hear. I don't know where they've been, but they didn't hear. Well, they're somewhere in Ephesus, okay? And so when Paul laid... Now listen to this. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now they're baptized in water first. This time they're baptized in water. Now in Acts chapter 10, the Holy Ghost baptized them. The Holy Ghost speaking in the tongues, baptizing God before baptism in water. But here in Acts 19, they're baptized in water after first. And then the Holy Ghost came. Now notice this. Notice this. And when Paul had laid hands on them, oh, this is different. First they're sitting, and another time they're in the middle of the service. This time Paul lays hands on them. Remember when Ananias baptized Paul in the Holy Ghost? Remember when you see the road to Damascus, Acts chapter 19, and Paul couldn't see? He had a, he had a, he had a Damascus road encounter with Jesus Christ, one that changed him forever. 
And then he was blind because he saw the light of Jesus we couldn't see. And so he didn't eat anything for three days. And Ananias came to him. He laid hands on him and prayed for him that God would heal him. And, and it, seemed like, it seemed like, you know, uh, scales came off his eyes. And God healed him. And then he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Although it doesn't say there in Acts 9 that he's spoken of the tongues. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Guess what? Paul was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And so what he's doing in Acts 19? He lays hands on these critters that hasn't heard anything for almost 19, 20 years. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so it says here, he baptized them in water, laid hands on them. And then it says the Holy Spirit came upon them. Now, now other places it says the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit fell, the Holy, the Holy Spirit had fallen. But here it says came. It just came. However you want to say it, don't get all caught up in terminology. The Holy Ghost came upon them, and what? They spoke with tongues, and now here, what did they do? They prophesied. Okay, in Acts 10, they magnified God. Here, they prophesied. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, Peter preaches, 3,000 get saved. Here, they prophesied. I don't know what they prophesied, but they prophesied. Man, that's good, folks. Now, the men are about 12 altogether. Now, I want to just say this before I close tonight. Now, things are happening here, okay? And, and so, you, the next story here, of course, you know, and they went into the synagogues and they spoke boldly for three months. And they're, 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 the reason of persuading people to accept Jesus, they please, they're preaching the gospel for three months in Ephesus. They're trying to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then you have the story, of course, of, of the seven sons of Sceva. And these guys trying to cast out devils like Paul does. And they said, well, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? And they jumped on the guys, they beat them up, and they went off running naked. Well, what a story. What a story. People saw that, and they feared God. They couldn't believe what was happening. Now, now look at this. And verse, uh, verse 16, uh, verse 17, verse... It says, verse 17, the Lord Jesus was magnified. And then it says, in verse 18, and many who, who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. So there you see repentance. This is the result of having the Holy Ghost. This is the result of having the promise of the Father. This is the result of having a powerful and high. The church acts differently. They're not murmuring, complaining all the time. They're givers. They love God. They love the gospel. They support it. They're a part of it. There's unity. There's oneness. There's harmony. There's power. There's salvation. Things are happening. Yeah. And so, and so that Jesus magnified, and those who believed in him came confessing, telling of their deeds. They're like, I'm a sinner. I'm a rotten sinner. Something we don't do these days. It's hard to find it. That people actually confess it's their fault or they're sorry. I apologize for, for doing this, for saying that, for talking like that. Whatever it might be, or for whatever. I'm sorry. Okay? And, and so, confessing, telling their deeds. Confess your faults to one another. Okay? Be careful who you, you confess it to. Because a lot of times in these days, people use it as ammunition against you later. So, you be, use wisdom. And it said, verse 19, also many of those who had practiced magic. We're talking about sorcerers. We're talking about witchcraft. We're talking about magic brought their books. Remember, I referred to it this morning together and burned them in the sight of all. They burned their books, all their magician books, all their magic books, all their sorcery books. They didn't take them to a garage sale to try to get some money. They didn't take them to the Salvation Army. They didn't take it to the nearest bookstore. They didn't take it to the library on book day. They didn't do that. What did they do? They got rid of it. They burned all of them. Guess what? Added up to 50,000 pieces of silver. Folks, that's a lot of moolah. That's a lot of money. And people today that are not full of the Holy Ghost, they would say, oh, we can't lose that money. We can't let go of that money. I noticed this, that Judas had the money bag. Amen. Judas was a treasurer. Judas held on to the money bag. He didn't want to tithe. Some folks have the spirit of Judas. <laughs> I'm going to have that little booger come up here and preach. Remember? I said this morning, the fig tree, Jesus gave it opportunity because that leaves to show the figs because the fig tree produces figs, then leaves. And he walked by and he was expecting fruit and he didn't get it. Remember that? He was expecting fruit and didn't get it. And so he, he went on by and he gave it some time. He came back and he wanted to see if there's fruit on there. He expected fruit and he didn't get it. So we do. He cursed it. And there are people today who should be producing fruit and they're not, so now they're cursed. And I tell you what, people don't like to hear that kind of preaching today. 
Wait, 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 Pastor. You offended me. Let me just say this. The book doesn't lie. The book doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. Not, not every story ends with a good story, with a good ending. Amen. Come on. I mean, we want the American dream, you know. Hallmark. Every story ends good. Not with this. Not everybody ends good. Not everybody ends saved. Not everybody's in heaven. More in hell than are in heaven. He said when he opened up the books of the dead, books. We talk about the book of life, it's singular book. Okay, let me, he says this, look at this. He said, also those, he said, burn them in the sight of all. What a testimony. And they covered up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Now get this. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. And that's what God wants in our lives. He wants the Word of God to grow mightily and prevail. He wants the Word of God to prevail through your life. He wants the Word of God to prevail through Word of Life Christian Center and every church that preaches the gospel of Christ that people might be saved and delivered and set free and baptized with the Holy Ghost and power from on high that they might make an impact and a difference in their world and everywhere they go. Yes, the Holy Ghost makes a difference. Would you stand with me please? Hallelujah. It isn't important, but it is. What do I mean by that? Ah, it doesn't matter what your posture is. That's not important. But what is important is what your posture is in your heart. Come, would you come, Abby, please? What I'm saying here tonight he said, I'm finding here, Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, he was preaching right to the religious and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, and he was preaching, man. He was getting down on it. Man, the truth was prevailing. And the Bible says that they got angry at Stephen and they gnashed their teeth. The religious gnashed their teeth. You know what? I've never seen anybody gnash their teeth naturally. But I have felt it spiritually. Angry at God, angry at the truth, angry at the messenger, angry at the message. When all it is is God trying to show His love, His mercy, and His grace to save you and to deliver you and to bless you. That's it. A little quiet, just a little quiet. Let me just say this. That's what God wants to do. Folks, it all comes down to this. Are you hungry for more? If, if you've never received the Holy Ghost, are you hungry for more? If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, do you want a refilling? I don't know. I just want to call a church-wide prayer meeting. And I, I don't know. I, I would love for you to I'll find a place to pray if you would. And I just want us to spend some time seeking the Lord. And, and as we feel led of God, we just want to lay hands on you and pray for you, however the need, whatever it is. But I just pray that you would be hungry for God, hungry for more of Jesus. Because He's right here and He's freely given. He's no respecter of persons. Maybe you were baptized Holy Ghost years ago. You remember the time, remember the day, you remember what happened. Well, my friend, maybe you need a fresh touch right now need a, re a renewing. So I want you to come and just pour your heart out to God and say, Lord, I want a renewing of the Holy Spirit. If there needs to be confession, then confession and take the books and burn them. Take the books and burn them. Whatever they are, burn them. If they're not of God, if they're not pleasing to the Lord, burn them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Don't give them away. Don't sell them in a garage sale. Get rid of them. Burn them. Get rid of it. Whatever it is that's hindering you from God, whatever it is that's holding you back, burn it, burn it, get rid of it. This is serious. For the trumpet, I believe, is about to sound. The Lord is coming. And I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying that. I believe it. Something's happening. Something's happening. Hallelujah. So church, it's up to you. 
But would you join with me tonight and spend a little time in prayer before we dismiss? Just come and let's find a place to pray and let's wait on the Lord. Let's wait on the Lord. Just step out of your pew. Come. You can make a pew, an altar right here in the front, an altar here. Sit, sit, stand, lay on your face, lay on your back. It doesn't matter. Walk in pace. It doesn't matter. God is not worried about your posture. He's bigger than your posture. He's bigger than that. He is concerned about your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is concerned about our heart. And this is for everybody. This is for everybody. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. This is for everybody. Just don't get in a hurry. No hurry tonight. Just wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. My Lord, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. What a service tonight. The presence of God, the power of God. Oh, this is it. This is it. There's the right spirit tonight. This is it. God is here. Jesus is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we wait on you. My Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I praise your name. Holy Spirit, come and reign in me. Hallelujah. Oh, breathe in me, Lord. My heart may Hallelujah. 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 Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with God. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I wait on you, God. I wait on you, God. This is what I need. This is what I must have. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. I pray. Hallelujah. I just want the Holy Ghost. I want the Spirit of God. I want the Lord. Hallelujah. I want Jesus. You know my heart. You see the position of my heart, God. The position of my heart. Hallelujah. I just want the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Ghost. Father God, I'm asking you to come. Come, Lord, in this place, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I need you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Remove all the stones out of my heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Just wait upon the Lord. Don't push God. Don't force God. Just wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Sitting in the audience, just go ahead. Just wait on God. We don't force God. We wait upon the Lord. God, we prepare our hearts tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. It doesn't matter, but it does. It doesn't matter, but it does. It does matter. The condition of my heart, God, I give my all to you. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hunger for you, Jesus. I hunger for you. I hunger for righteousness. I hunger for righteousness. I hunger for you, God. I want the Holy Spirit. I cry in my heart for you. I want you. I want Christ. I want your gift. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Spirit of God. Lord I want the by the tongues as a fire to sit upon me. I want the Lord Spirit to blaze in my heart. Oh, how I want the Holy Spirit. I want God. This is the answer. Healing is here. Power is here. Deliverance is here. Salvation is here. 
Renewing is here. Reviving is here. Revival in my heart is right here. I wait on God. I go ahead in your heart. You cry out to God. In your heart, we cry out to God. In your heart, we cry out to God. In your heart, we cry out to God. We cry out to God. We cry out to God in our heart. We believe in the name of Jesus. We believe in the name of Jesus in our heart, God. We cry out to God. We cry out to God. We cry out to God. We believe, Father. I believe. I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I'm asking you to pour out of your spirit. Here we are as your people. Here we are as your church. We're in one place and we're in one accord. There's unity. There's harmony. There's oneness, God. I pray for your spirit, your power to be poured out on us, oh, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, a renewing, a reviving, a power that comes from heaven, a mighty rushing wind. I pray in the name of the Lord. I'm asking, Father God, move, oh God. We come at your mercy. We come believing you according to your grace, according to the word of God, and by faith we cry out to you. We believe you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We believe you, Lord God. We believe you, Lord God. We believe you right now. Hallelujah. We pray, Father, believe in you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We praise you and we worship you and we exalt you, Father. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, have your way, Jesus. Have your way, God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, touch us tonight. Oh, God, draw my heart to you. Draw my heart to you, Jesus. Draw my heart to you, Lord. Draw me, Lord. Oh, God, that's it right there, right there. After you, oh, draw me. God, I'm asking you to pour out of the Holy Ghost. Lord, in my heart, I hunger for you. I hunger for more. I want the Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, and I run after you. Oh, draw me, Lord. Oh, draw me. Hallelujah. Just cry out to the Lord, my beloved friends. Child of God, cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I want you, Lord God. I desire you. I seek your face. Draw Jesus. This is the answer. Let the church get back to the cross, back to the blood, back to the power of Pentecost. To the things that are needed and must. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my beloved friends, the Lord is present. He's here. The Lord is present. Hallelujah. Lord, and I'll run after you. Oh, draw me. 
Hallelujah. Jesus, my Lord. And the Rabakim Baba Baba Shakatrabakosh and the Rabako. Oh, draw me, Lord. Oh, draw me, he Lord. Hallelujah. And I'll run. While she's playing, I just want to ask you this. If you would like us to pray for you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to just ask you to come stand right up here in the front. If you would like us to pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost, just come stand right up here in the front. Right up here in the front, if you'd like that. Hallelujah. If you, want to be, if you want the baptism for the first time, or you want the renewing or refilling of the Holy Ghost, just come stand up here. We'll just lay hands on you. Amen. And we'll pray for you. We'll pray for you tonight. Anybody tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just come stand right here in the front. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, draw me. It's okay. So just let the Lord do this. Nobody's forced to do anything. You can remain and pray. It's fine. There's no problem. Whatever you want to do, whatever it is. Hallelujah. Oh, draw me. stand right up here with me. Come stand right across here. Come right here. Amen. Come on over here. Come on, Miss Rhonda. Come right here. Amen. Just back up. Just back up a little bit right here. Hallelujah. How do you want to receive the Holy Ghost tonight? You want the Holy Ghost tonight? Anybody else want a refilling of the Holy Ghost? Anybody else? Hallelujah. All right, church. Amen. I'm going to ask the rest of you to come up here. Just to come up behind these folks here, whether in front or behind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care. But I'm just going to ask you to lay hands on them and pray in other tongues, believing for the Holy Ghost. Amen. For you that want the Holy Ghost, listen, you might feel something bubbling up inside of you. You might feel something inside of you. Amen. The Spirit of God bubbling up inside of you. You might, you might begin to have stammering lips, something like that. That's okay. Don't hold that back. Just let God do it. Just let the Lord do it. Begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And so, Father, hallelujah, we pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray in the name of Jesus. And I'm asking you, God, and the miracle of God, the power of God, I'm asking you right now to baptize these right here in the front with the Holy Ghost with the initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I pray for them right now in the name of the Lord. I'm asking in Jesus' name, oh God, come upon them. Lord, however you desire, fall upon them. Fill them. Come upon them, Lord. I'm asking in the name of the Lord because in our heart we cry out to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Just begin to worship Him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord. Hallelujah. Open your heart up to Him. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Believe God. Believe God. I pray in the name of the Lord. Receive the Holy Ghost. And a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. I pray right now in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just begin to worship Him and begin to cry out to Him. Come with a broken and contrite heart. Come with a heart that's hungry. Come with a heart that wants more of God. I pray right now in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, my God. I'm asking you. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Keep praying, church. Keep praying. Keep believing God right now. In the name of the Lord, let faith arise. Let faith arise. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 I pray right now, Father. Receive the Holy Ghost. 
Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Just begin to cry out to God. Begin to cry out to God. Begin to cry out to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, pray for them tonight. Pray for them tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah. Amen. Hold on to God. Hold on to the hem of His garment. Hold on to His nail-scarred hands. Hold on to His Word. Hold on by faith. I want you to know it's for you. I want you to know it's for the child of God. I want you to know it's for the Christian. I want you to know it's for you. 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 you. Hallelujah. It's for you. It's for you. Glory to God. Cry out to the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. I cry out to you. Open up your heart. Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Cry out to the Lord, church. Believe the Lord tonight. Amen. The Word of God is true. God is true. Amen. He cannot lie. It is for you. It's for you. It's for you. Glory to God. I pray the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Just cry out His name, church. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus, I need you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Cry out to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to wait upon the Lord here. There's no hurry. I want to wait upon the Lord because I'm waiting for waves of His glory. Waves of His glory. Hallelujah. Waves of His glory. Ways of His glory, Father, we wait on you tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. God just wants us to wait on Him tonight. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost of God, we wait on you. We wait on you, Lord God. 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 I pray the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come with hungry hearts. Come with a hungry heart. Say, God, I must have you. I must have you. I must have the Holy Ghost. I must have the gift of God. I must have this power from on high. Amen. Open your heart up to the Lord and begin to worship and begin to praise Him. From your innermost being, begin to worship Him and begin to praise Him. Hallelujah. I pray the name of the Lord. Is he just let the Holy Ghost flow? Just let it flow. Just let God touch you and don't hold back. Hey man, just let it go. Let it go. Let the Holy Ghost just move and flow through you. Oh, my son, hallelujah, Michael, just let it go. Oh, we open our heart to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord. I'm 
you, Jesus, hallelujah. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, God. I want you. I want you, Lord. I want more of Jesus. I want your gift. I want your promise. I want you. I want you, Jesus. I wait on you, God. I wait on you, Christian. You just cry out to God. You cry out in your heart. I want Him. I want the Lord. I want a filling or a refilling of the Holy Ghost. I want Him. Hallelujah. I cry out to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just open our heart to Him. Open your heart to God. Hallelujah. 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 Can I have some folks of the church come in the front of them also? I want to surround them tonight. Would I have you come around front as well? Come around front as well. Amen. Amen. Just begin to pray for them. Come around front as well. Let's pray for them. Let's surround them. The whole church. Can I have you praying? Can I have you praying? Just pray in the Spirit. Pray, believing God in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil is a liar. I believe God. I believe His Word. I believe. And I want you to open your heart up to the promise of God. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 We praise You. Lord, we worship You. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. My Lord. Jesus, I worship you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In your presence. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. And then that one. And then this one. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we pray in the name of the Lord. Amen. That... In your presence, that's right. In your presence, oh, Lord. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my. Jesus. <laughs> God is teaching us to wait on Him tonight. Hallelujah! 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 Lord God! Hallelujah! Have your way, Lord! Help us tonight! Touch us tonight! Oh God, pour out your Spirit, I pray! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God! I want God. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want the Holy Ghost. I want God. I want the Lord in this place. I want Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We worship you, Lord God. We magnify the holy name of Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord. And we praise your name, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord. Oh, Lord. That's where I am. 
my Lord. Oh God, bless you, Jesus, my Lord. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, Almighty God. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorify you, God. I praise your holy name, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. My Lord, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, Father God, we praise you, Jesus. honey your name is like honey on my lips your spirit is like water to my soul your word is a lamp to my feet and Jesus I love you I love you and Jesus, and Jesus, and holy and anointed one, and Jesus, sing with me, church, and Jesus. Just worship the Lord as we sing this tonight. And Jesus, and risen and exalted one, Jesus, your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you, your name. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Oh, yes. Gee. Something about that name, church. Amen. Jesus, holy and anointed. 
it one G is us oh Lord we praise your name Lord we worship you tonight hallelujah hallelujah we worship you Lord we love you Lord and we bless the name of the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lo papa pasha la cola la kiatra boko. Spirit of God, Spirit of the Lord, move in our hearts, Lord, I pray, oh God.